In this video, we're going to discuss something just a little bit different than we normally do, and that's how to make a small edit to a current script to adjust it to our own needs or liking. So sometimes this is going to come up. Not all the behaviors can be just universally perfect for every type of scenario. Sometimes you might want to make a small change to an existing behavior and not, you know, not a whole new behavior, just, you know, tweak it a little bit to suit your own needs. And I want to empower you to be able to do that. So let me give you an example. In my case, I've got the target behavior set up in this scene. Um, if you haven't seen it already, I did a video on the target behavior recently. Be sure to go and take a look at that so you can kind of understand everything that I'm talking about here. But it's not really important to, you know, the overall topic. It could be any behavior. I just picked this one as an example. Um, so in my scene, I've got a radio and that radio is, is set up as a target. And the reason I did that is because I, what I wanted it to be is more interactive. I wanted, like, if I accidentally shot the radio, I wanted something to happen visually just for fun, right? So if I shoot the radio, watch what happens. You, you'll see some sparks fly out of it. You'll see some smoke rise out of it. But what, look what also happened. It rotated, right? Just like the target is supposed to do ordinarily. But watch what happens next. It rotates back. And I could set that time out to you know thousands of seconds i guess but at the end of the day ultimately at some point it's going to rotate back so i don't want that also i mean really i don't want it to rotate at all because even though the radio you could like excuse it by saying well the bullet turned the radio right well what about this thing all right did that's weird <laughs> and uh it's going to turn back eventually and so that's also weird so i don't want that behavior but i want everything else i want the target to be able to act as a target other otherwise i want it to score points i want it to trigger uh the the particle effects and all the other things that it's doing just not rotate so let's take a look at the code and see if we can figure out just what we need to change in order to make that ch uh, that uh adjustment to the script all right so this is the target.lewis script you can find it in your uh your documents game apps game guru max files script bank and you'll find the the one that necrom created in the community folder you just go down to core and then here's all the different behaviors and all their different uh subcategories so that's where you would find these ordinarily um, i've got a couple other scripts and then you have the user folder which right now is should probably be empty unless you've used it for something else but that's where you're supposed to make your own scripts or you can make your own scripts and you really want to put your own scripts in there because if you don't the next time there's a update it might overwrite what you do, did to your own scripts so just be careful with that put your custom ones right there Okay, so let's go take a look at the Lua. Now, even if you've never touched code a day in your life, you're going to be able to do this one thing very easily. And you're going to be able to do this with most scripts. Maybe not all the scripts. Some of the scripts are pretty complex. But this small thing, I think, is a good example of the power that you have to be able to make these kinds of changes yourself. Here at the top, we have the... Uh, pieces of the code that show up in the editor all this area in gray where it says description these are what shows up in the editor so in other words this part right here is the drop down that shows up that gives us the target type options right we have static moving and spinning and again if you're not sure what those do you may not be familiar with the target behavior go back and watch the target video that'll explain what that is but the point is is that we want a fourth one we want a fourth option so we're going to add it right here we're going to add a comma and we're going to add a four equals and i'll call it scenery okay so that's going to apply to anything that i want to act as a scenery target type um, but adding it to the drop down isn't quite enough right it needs to be more than that because we have to, to tell it okay now that you know that it's a, a scenery object or scenery target what then what does it do well we want it to be very much like the static uh, object except we don't want it to rotate so if we scroll down a little bit we'll see there's some some more functions here this uh just at a really high level this part right here is just telling it okay what exactly is a target and and what is it 
you know, its core behavior like. Beyond that, you don't really need to know much else. I'm just going to skip past a lot of that. And we'll get down to target main. So target main is telling you, okay, now that you know what a target is and what, are, what the basic uh, behavior of a target is, they can be shot and things like that. It's properties and so on, right? Then what am I supposed to do specifically if I'm a scenery target or a static target or a moving target or so on? So that's where we start defining the main behavior of the target. So uh, we can skip past a lot of this. We get down to this if end uh, statements here. So in Lua we have uh, if and we end the if statement with an end and everything in between is what is it going to do. So here if we just read this it says if the target is target type 1 then do something. Okay so let's break this down a little bit further. That E that you see in the, uh, the brackets that's referring to the entity. So in other words the thing that it's attached to. Right. So we've defined what a target is above and we've de defined what a target type is above. So it's just referring to the, the references that we made above. So if all of this is equal to one and we've defined one, what one is, if you'll recall, one is equal to static. So we're saying if the target is set to be a static target, that's our if statement. Let me find that again. There we are. So if our target is set to static, uh, then do something. Well, it's going to set the move X, move Y, and move Z to zero. Okay, so in other words, it's not going to be moving around. It's not going to be spinning. It's not going to be moving left, right, back, and forth. It's going to sit right where it's at. Okay, so that sounds like what we want for scenery as well. We don't want it to move around the scene um, at all. So we want to definitely acquire this part of it. So uh, what we can do is we can take this part right here all the way through the equal sign. I'm just going to copy that with control C and then I'm going to add it here, but we can't just paste it in. We have to say, or, and that's obviously a keyword because it's, it's recognizing the color of it. Um, and that's why I like editors like this. So, so I can know that I hit the right uh, syntax. All right, and then we can just paste that in. So if it's target type one or it's target type four, then do this. So now we've just said, okay, if it's target type four, it's going to act very much like target type one. But we also don't want it to rotate. So let's see if we can figure out where it is in this code that dictates when it's going to rotate. So if we just scroll down through here, this is what it does if it's type two. This is what it does if it's type three. So we know we can skip over a lot of those things. And again, pay attention to where an if statement uh, begins and ends. So you can kind of see where you should be focusing. So uh, that's type three that ended. So what's this next piece? This says if the health is less than zero. So we've shot the target until the point which the health of the target reaches, uh, I'm sorry, less than a hundred rather. Um, then what do we do? So that sounds like, you know, the behavior that we're looking for. When we hit shoot the target, it reduces its health, um, and we know that it rotates at that moment. So it's probably around here somewhere. Uh, if we look through here closely, we see if the target type is equal to 1, then it's going to reset the rotation to negative 90 degrees. So maybe we don't like that. Maybe we don't want it to, maybe we want it to do 180 degrees or, you know, 360 we want it to spin all the way around you know whatever we want it to do we could change something like that uh, but really i don't want it to move at all i don't want it to rotate at all so if it's target type one then it's going to rotate that's what it's supposed to do if it's target type two then it's going to you know do some other things hide it for example same thing with this um, but i'm not seeing anything here uh, talking about target type four so we could add that we could tell it what to do specifically but really uh we could also not we could just say you know what let's not add the target type here and then it won't know what to do if it's target type four and it's been shot and so it won't do anything right and so we've already established it's not going to move and we we're here we're saying if the target's health re, uh, re, uh, is less than 100 then 
do something. Well, in our case, we don't want it to do anything. So we're going to leave that part out. So we actually don't have to add anything here. Um, in fact, we are pretty much done. The only other piece that I saw in this code that theoretically we might just, you know, think about changing, but we're not going to, is this here. So it says if the time elapsed, then reset it to whatever it was originally, right? So we know that if we shoot a target, say a static target, it rotates, and then after a certain period of time, it rotates back. Well, if it never rotated to begin with, then there's no reason to rotate it back, right? Same thing as if it never disappeared to begin with, and there's no reason to, re to make it reappear. So if we never do these things, then we then it, it won't do anything. It'll just be shot, and it'll trigger as it's supposed to trigger. But it's not going to rotate, and it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to disappear. It's not going to do anything else. Um, so we're actually not going to do something in this case. And so the only two pieces that we needed to change to make a whole new uh, target type is to add it in the drop down and then tell it how to behave. And once we did that, we can save our changes. We'll add it to our user uh, folder here. Um, and we'll restart max, apply the behavior, the user behavior to it. And be sure that you're looking at the right location, right? So if we look at this radio, for example, um, when we apply a behavior, we can look directly in our user folder right here. And if it's in there, then you can select the one that you made as opposed to the one that came with max and apply that one instead. Um, but we don't happily, we don't have to do this because I was talking through this whole uh, video with Necrom and uh, he decided to incorporate my changes to the actual target. So in, in the near future, you should be seeing uh, the stationary and the, um, the uh, scenery target types in the actual default behavior, something like that. So we can already do scenery as of the date of this video. But the point of this was to explain to you that, okay, you know, if you uh, just want to make a small change, how would you go about doing it? And that's how you would do that. There's one more thing I want to cover uh, before we end this video, and that is troubleshooting. Okay. So an old mentor of mine uh, once told me, never expect it to work. Always expect it to fail. Whatever, whenever you're coding, just expect things to go wrong. Um, you know, you try it out and it doesn't work. You're not going to be disappointed. You were expecting that and you're going to try again and you're going to fail again. And that's going to happen probably multiple times, especially in the beginning. And then eventually it'll work and you'll be pleasantly surprised. And that's really the attitude you should be taking when it comes to programming, because it is a lot of it. It's just trial and error. And eventually you get used to some of the same things that happen over and over again and stop making the same mistakes over and over again. You start learning. It's just how learning works, right? So case in point, when I made this uh, attempt originally, I made a little error. What I did was this. I put a negative sign here instead of an equal sign here. Don't know what I was thinking, just typo or whatever you want to call it. But the point is I did the wrong thing. And when I applied the behavior, the drop down option didn't show up. And I guess I'm just rusty. I haven't done any programming recently and I just didn't catch it. I looked and looked and looked. I mean, it's a small thing. It only takes one character uh, to be wrong, but it was wrong and it didn't work and I couldn't quite catch it. And so happily he was uh, nice enough to correct my mistake um, and, and point that out. Everything else was perfect and it worked uh, beautifully. So be aware of that, especially for, for two reasons. One, you're new at this, you know, it's going to take some practice and some time to so be patient, but then also notice that I'm not getting any kind of syntax error uh, when I do this. It's totally just letting me do this. And I don't know if any other editor would let me do this or if it would show up like a little red squiggly line underneath it, like I'm used to, but I didn't see it because it didn't, it didn't catch it. It didn't warn me um, in C sharp it would uh, throw a, a compiling error, wouldn't even run. Um, in JavaScript, I would normally see a little red squiggly mark underneath it, and that would indicate something's wrong, and I could at least investigate it. But in this case, completely missed it. Um, so just be aware of that, and uh, maybe try out a couple different editors to see which one you like. But most of all, the, the take-home here is be patient with yourself. Um, it's going to be trial and error. You're going to get some things wrong. 
Some things are not going to work. Some of the best uh, programs and games that we've seen uh, in our lifetime, some of the best like behaviors or mechanics were mistakes. Um, they've made, there's a number of those that, you know, they didn't intend to do it, but then they play tested it. And they're like, yeah, that's kind of cool. And they left it in. Um, so you never really know what you're going to uh, get from, from that experience, but I think it's worth doing. Uh, but that's it. That's my rant. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned anything new, I would appreciate the clicking of that like button down below. It helps me out tremendously. Uh, if you're new here, if you just haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to have you stick around. And lastly, if you'd like a notification for whenever uh, we, I post a new video, just click the bell icon. That'll notify you when a new video is ready for you to, to take a look at. Uh, but that's it. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.